Now, let's move on to South Africa. The country is facing its worst ever power crisis as it heads into a bitter southern hemisphere winter with daily blackouts of up to 10 hours a day and fears it could lead to major civil unrest. A BBC investigation has looked into what's behind the power cuts, the corruption, the criminal cartels and the government's alleged complicity, as well as an international effort to move the country off coal and onto renewable energy. Andrew Harding sent this report from Johannesburg. It is going to be a cold, dark night for many South Africans, with stage six load shedding. South Africa is sinking into darkness. Power cuts in Johannesburg for hours every day. The continent's most developed economy can no longer keep the lights on. Gloom spreading through businesses, like this bar, open for the past 25 years. Because of the power, you have those, the electricity. You can see now, it's dark. Are you going to survive in your business? I don't think so. I don't think so. Next door, a cash transfer company is on the ropes too. It must be frustrating. It is very much frustrating. Do you see an end in sight? I don't. This is our new life now. Why such chaos? The answers lie out here, in coal country. Almost all South Africa's electricity is generated by burning coal. But the industry is being plundered. Billions of pounds lost to criminal cartels. Mines like this one looted. Even at night we hear gunshots. Gunshots. Even they are fighting among themselves. For the, the different gangs? Yes. What's extraordinary is quite how brazen it is. It's happening every day, out in the open, in daylight, and no one's stopping it. With the looting comes sabotage like this at power stations, as ruthless gangs fight to win lucrative maintenance contracts. Someone pulls a gun on me. You held it to your head? Yeah, held it to my head. Did they threaten your family? They did. They told me that they're not even afraid of anybody. They're politically connected. So they're above the law? Basically. How to stop the rot? The governing ANC hired this white businessman, Andre de Reuter, to fix ESCOM, the power utility. This was clearly now uh, an, an act of sabotage, and I think we can call it as such. But he soon declared the corruption was just too big and that powerful politicians were involved. Then, last December, he was poisoned, his cup of coffee laced with cyanide. He nearly died. I started feeling uh, extremely nauseous. At that stage, I was shaking um, badly. I was literally lying like this and, and uh, shaking, gasping for air. But the response from South Africa's ANC government has been skeptical. I can't give evidence to that. His doctors say he was poisoned. The tests show he was poisoned I with can't cyanide, give rat no, poisoning. I, I can't give evidence to that. So you don't recognize this picture he's portrayed of an ANC using ESCOM as a feeding trough? No, I don't. The irony is that vast, sun-blessed South Africa could quickly solve its power crisis by going green. But for now, South Africa remains in the dark. Traffic lights down, corruption out of control. Andrew Harding, BBC News, Johannesburg. And there's much more on the energy crisis in South Africa on our BBC News website.